Hi everyone, I'm Raif Darazi, and in this video I have the great pleasure of interviewing our special guest, Mark Franke, no, otherwise known as the Dusseldorf patient. We'll get to hear about Mark being cured of HIV, his successful leukemia treatment, what the whole process looked like, and get to know him on a personal level as well. We are currently in Novato, California for the annual HOPE conference, um, a meeting with all the scientists from around the world discussing the block lock stop. It used to be known as block lock excise, modality of preclinical research for an HIV cure. Specifically, we are at the beautiful Buck Institute, which focuses its research on aging, including aging with HIV as part of their spectrum of research. All right, so nice to have you, Mark. Thank you for agreeing to sit down with me and have this conversation. Thanks you have for having me here, and I would love to share my story. Yes, let's, let's do it. But before we dive right into your story, um, I want to ask you a general question that I ask all my guests, which is what is your personal assessment of the global HIV AIDS epidemic? Well, I hope that uh, in the near future we can stop it and th that the scientists find an HIV cure because uh, I can't recommend the way I went through, but I hope that via gene therapy this will be possible to recreate for everyone all over the world. So you had your stem cell transplant over 10 years ago. Yes, I was transplanted in on Valentine's Day 2013, so now I'm over one decade after the stem cell transplant. Well, what a romantic day to have your... Yeah, I don't know and, if you celebrate... And I celebrated it with uh, family and friends mm. and also my stem cell donor was uh, there and my doctor. That's yeah. interesting you mentioned your stem cell donor because I really don't have any information on that. No one really talks about that as much. So you, so you were able to meet your, your donor? Yeah, in Germany it's possible mm. if the, the donor wants the connection and the uh, transplantee and both uh, want to know each other, after one year they can uh, connect and after two years they can exchange uh, wow. data. And so I met Anna uh, later and it's a great relationship and she forced me to uh, share my story and go to the media. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I love that. Uh, but before we dive in deeper into your story with HIV and with cancer, I want to get to know you personally a little bit, if that's okay. Um, can you tell us where you were born, where you grew up? I was born in Germany in a little town and then I studied electrical engineering and now mm. I work as a technical writer. Is that, is that like technical manuals, that kind of? Uh, I'm working in a software company and I'm doing manuals and also looking about uh, uh, all, the, all the words that I come up with mm. the software and we translate into 13 languages. Yes. So those of you, when you get those thick pamphlets with all those languages of tech, technical information. Think of it's, our friend it's, here. It's only uh, electronical now. Uh, uh, we only uh, we have a, a portal and uh, you, you can download PDFs, but we don't print it anymore. Yeah. Saving paper. Yeah. Okay, you told me this earlier, but this is your very first trip outside of Europe. Yeah. It's about time. Yeah, <laughs> congratulations. I'm, I, I'm glad that I was invited to meet this yeah. conference and to share my story and to tell it to the scientists and to inspire them mm. uh, with my story. Uh, I think it's uh, very important to see the people behind the numbers. The scientists only knew me as a number and I was very glad to meet uh, many of them in uh, Germany and in the Netherlands because uh, most of the work was coordinated from Utrecht, from iSystem, the database where all the patients, uh, the HIV patients yeah. that uh, became a, a stem cell transplant are collected together to compare all the cases. Wow, Utrecht is my birthplace. Yeah. Special. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I know you haven't had time to step out on your own. 
how how are you liking America so far? What you've <laughs> seen of it? <laughs> oh, I didn't have seen so much. I was in a grocery store and <laughs> I was shocked about the prices. <laughs> if you compare uh, the same marmalade from uh, Germany to the US in Germany, I think it's under three euros. And I saw the same marmalade for seven ninety nine plus tax. Yes. And I was shocked. Yeah, I was in the Netherlands uh, under a month ago with my mom. We were in a grocery store and I saw the same things that we have here, Dutch cookies and snacks. And I was like, they're so cheap. Why are we paying so much? <laughs> so uh, going into your background with HIV, when were you diagnosed with HIV? I was diagnosed in January 2008 and the doctors told me it was a fresh infection so it should have been a maximum three months ago that okay. I was infected mm -hmm. uh, and well it was a shock for me because I, th I th um, thought I played safe but well, really? well uh, with my boyfriends, I, I went to the H to an, to the HIV test, mm -hmm. uh, but with the uh, last one, uh, he was a chef, and we couldn't make it uh, to go there. And well, hmm, it happened. It's yeah. uh, with pregnancy, one time yeah. counts. <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> that's a good that's a good um, anecdote, though. That it 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 only takes one time. And it doesn't happen all the time. It's just, you never know. So it's good to get tested. And, yeah, and I uh, learned uh, in Germany it's uh, free if you go to your doctor and you tell them that you are uh, homosexual, uh, it's uh, for free. Mm. Uh, but they, uh, most of the doctors don't know. The doctors uh, don't know that. Yeah, because they don't know how to get the money from the insurance oh. company because they had to have to uh, uh, another procedure. So um, mostly, most of the times, it you have to pay for it because the doctors don't know. Wow. So they might know that it's free, but they don't know how to re get reimbursed. Yeah. Wow. Well, isn't that a summary of the problems with healthcare systems, not just there, but in the U.S. too? And what was your understanding, since this is 2008, what was your understanding of HIV in general once you have it? Well, I was born in uh, uh, 69, so uh, when I uh, um, grew up, uh, I had the pictures uh, in the media that are uh, frozen, uh, all the uh, people dying and that was a shock for me uh, because if you don't if you don't have it you don't think about it and right. well then i learned it's not that problem as it seems to be but the worst thing is that you can't talk about it because of the stigma mm. and i think without the stigma hiv will be a better handleable but we have to fight against the stigma. Yeah. And truly, HIV can be eradicated today with PrEP, with ARVs, with U yeah. equals U. Oh, and people get to the test. And, and testing, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a shame that stigma is such a huge hurdle to that. Did you have any kind of negative perception of people living with HIV beforehand? No. No? Because I didn't know anyone. Oh, you didn't even, it wasn't even in your view. No. Hmm. And I, I think a lot of people can relate to that too. Well, and now uh, I learn uh, such great things about gr uh, meeting groups and didn't know about them. So I, if I would have joined them, it would have been much easier to handle uh, the HIV hmm. diagnose. Yeah. And did you, did you personally experience stigma? after your diagnosis that you had to well i didn't tell anyone uh, oh. only a, f a few clo very close friends but not the family so um because i ha was afraid of the stigma mm. i didn't tell anyone yeah is there much visibility in germany of prominent figures people living with hiv not really uh we had a time when there was uh 
uh, outing of uh, homosexual people in the media, but uh, no, I think no one is tends to his HIV infection. Mm. Mm. I only knew uh, some people, for example, Jean Gourand, uh, the singer-songwriter. I love his songs mm. and his music and so I asked the TV stations that produce something about me if they can uh, use his music and one uh, in one video uh, John's music is uh, in the background so right. I'm very happy <laughs> yeah. uh, for this well no one knows about this uh, <laughs> but it's for very you. important for me yeah it's special and when did you find out that you had leukemia I w went to the ambulance because of a lung infection and it was a lung infection and at the the first blood uh, test showed uh, that there is something wrong mm. and so the uh, lung infection was cured and after that they uh, cared about the blood and mm. they made a um, knochenmark punction a bone mirror punction oh, into the spine yeah oh yeah i forget the technical name <laughs> But I know what you mean. Uh, so to get your spinal fluid? No, not the fluid. Oh. Uh, the uh, bone marrow. Bone marrow. Okay. Oh. That's painful, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they did test of that and then they were that, able to... And then it was uh, acute myelone leukemia AML. Okay. Um uh, Timothy also had AML, Paul had AML. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, common for HIV people to get cancer and these kind of leukemia. Oh, okay. So you think that, so it's possible that the HIV contributed to your risk factor of, of yeah. getting this cancer? Well, I think it's about a third. Uh, greater to, risk. To greater risk to get uh, yeah. Cancer. I think Adam mentioned that to me yeah. as well. Yeah. You're married? Yeah, I'm married. <laughs> okay. Uh, how and when did you meet your husband? Well, when I was lying in hospital because of the pneumonia. Or what's it? Uh, pneumonia? Pneum oh, pneumonia, yeah. yes. I uh, had time to chat at Planet Romeo and I met a guy. <laughs> And <laughs> from the bed, yes, <laughs> from the bed. Amazing. And uh, uh, I haven't changed my um, city, so mm. uh, I said to him, "Well, I'm nearer than you think." Mm. Uh, you, he lived in Düsseldorf, and so uh, I asked him to visit me in hospital. The next day, he wow. came, and then he visited me every day. Wow! So that was a a big chance for me because I had to be prepared in the evening to look good. Uh, so the chemos didn't hurt me uh, wow. and the doctors looked at me every t uh, every day and uh, uh, said, well, uh, you're fine, but mm, you shouldn't. <laughs> but uh, so I think the power of love guided me wow. through all this. What an incredible story. Touching. And what a man to... Yeah, uh, uh, Ingo is a teacher for disabled, mm. so he's looking for the people in another way. He's not looking for the illnesses, he's looking for the humanity, uh, humanity. and uh, so he wanted to know me, and mm. uh, that was great, and that helped me a lot. Mm. Tremendous compassion and empathy. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, is your husband living with HIV? No. No, he's not. Were there any, well, I think you've already answered this, but were there any challenges with you living with HIV and him not living with HIV? I was lying in the hospital. We didn't thought about our life uh, and mm. uh, we wanted to know each other and I wa know that he was the right guy to live with. So that was my uh, inspiration to get through this and to okay. get back on my feet to know him better. What an amazing story. What was the initial news like when you were told 
we found a donor with this mutation for you. Well, that was later. In 2011, they started with normal chemo mm. and uh, I got back in my life seven to eight months later. And in 2012, uh, there was a relapse of the leukemia. And then uh, the doctors told me this time a normal chemo wouldn't, wouldn't work. So I need a stem cell transplant. Mm. And at that time, they thought, well, if he needs a transplant, why don't we try the things the scientists at the Charité uh, did with Timothy and uh, Timothy Ray Brown, Timothy Ray Brown, the Berlin patient. And at that time, uh, I was watching a documentary about Timothy and I s said to me, well, if it worked once, why should it work with me? And the doctors asked me if I will wait. They had to, to look after each uh, donor that will fit for me mm -hmm. and to uh, then to search if someone of these has the gene defect. Mm. And so I had to... And uh, at this point, how long were you in a relationship with Ingo? Uh, the second year. Second year, okay. We met to uh, January 2011 mm -hmm. and it was October 2012. Okay. And so you had this conversation with him as well, letting him know, okay, we're looking into stem cell. Yeah. And the doctors asked me, uh, are you willing to get more chemo procedures for the uh, the time waiting for the right donor? And I said, well, I will risk it mm. because I wanted to get rid of HIV. And was your experience of the chemo really demanding on your body? Well, I had uh, the great luck that I it didn't mm. really hurt me. Some people have uh, problems with the tongue mm. and can't eat and have to be uh, uh, the food uh, via a, a tube. A tube. Mm. Um, wow. <laughs> uh, but I didn't. Wow. Well, the doctors told me, uh, gain weight, you will lose a lot. Well, it didn't work on me because... So uh, you just gained weight? No. <laughs> yeah, I gained weight, <laughs> but I didn't lose it. <laughs> and, uh, well, I went went very well. Mm. Amazing. And then, uh, it must be uh, mid-December, they told me they found the right donor. And this wow. was the biggest Christmas present ever. And, uh, well, then the donor has to be prepared and the tr transplant was on Valentine's Day 2013. And I'm sure they told you that there are risks inherent with the procedure as well. Of course, because your immune system is uh, erased. Non-existent. No, not as existing. Wow. Because uh, if there is any uh, virus or um, bacteria, you can die. Mm. Uh, and they and need to do that in order so that your body accepts the transplant? Yeah, your your own immune system has to be killed and then... Otherwise the it would fight the transplant. Yeah. And then the new transplant comes. And mm. this is interesting because it's only, uh, I think, two, 250 milliliters of blood, uh, the T cells, mm -hmm. and that's it is. Well. Um, you get a needle, uh, it's... I think fusion, uh, fusion uh, I think not not half an hour and that is it. And it's interesting because the transplant is um, frozen and they got glucose to um, that the cells are not damaged uh, during the f uh, frozen procedure and uh, the glucose uh, makes your tongue uh, smell like tomato and you uh, um, uh, uh, taste like tomato and you smell like tomato <laughs> if you get the transplant okay. and it's crazy. So you're temporarily a tomato. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for going to detail. That's really interesting. I never heard all that before and, and that it's so, such a quick, simple procedure. 
Yeah, and then uh, you have to wait that the cells uh, found the right way to the mm. bone marrow and uh, to start producing new cells. And so I, I imagine that eventually the doctors allow your immune system to rebound, to come back online. Yeah. And then they have to do something to make sure that it doesn't start attacking the new cells? Yeah, that's called uh, immune suppression. Uh, you get uh, special pills uh, mm. to lower the uh, um, immune system, that, it's, uh, that the old is not fighting against the new one. This can normally, it's up to one year that you get immune suppression. Is that hard on the body to experience? No, but, well, you have to be careful. If I went outside, I had to wear a FFP3 mask. And at that time, before COVID, I was the alien in yeah. uh, my city. And uh, because mm. the people think uh, that you um, will uh, hide something from them, but I had to protect, to protect myself. Yeah. But it doesn't look like you're protecting yourself. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> yeah, I can imagine before pre-COVID. Yeah. Now it's like okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I, I, and I've said this before, and I want to reiter re reiterate it again for people watching. The transplant involves uh, a rare genetic mutation, the homozygous CCR532 mutation, and as you can tell from Mark's story. This is not something that's viable for everyone to just suddenly say, oh, I want a uh, stem cell transplant because I have HIV. It's, it's very specific for people who don't really have much, many other options. Yeah. You mentioned the homozygous. Uh, uh, in 10% of the European uh, or the Caucasian uh, population, this gene mutation is present. Mm. And... Uh, Homozygous means that it's uh, given from the father and the mother. So your 10 percent. Wow. Uh, uh, it has to be both. Uh, it has to be both. Uh, 10 multiples 10 means 1 percent. Mm. So it's very rare. I see. So you need a donor that's that matches mm -hmm. plus the gene defect. And this is a. Uh, a needle uh, in not only in in the hay; it's uh, on the uh, on a big uh, field with uh, hay. <laughs> What's hay spine? Hay, hay slags. Yeah, and it's predominantly that mutation is found in that European region. Yeah, and that's why most of the donor recipients are from that region as well. Of course, because people might say, "Why? Why are all these white white men getting the transplant in the?" But that's on a genetic level. Yeah, they suggested it was because of the past, but it's uh, proven that it's not. But it's something, uh, a disease uh, that was in the Middle Age. And yeah. so it's... Um, so that's an example of an endogenous disease that was once prevalent, that is no longer impacting humans, but it left, it left a change in DNA that yeah. ends up being positive. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah. Can you give us a little sneak peek of what that experience was like for someone to call you or sit you down and tell you that, give you the results of the transplant and tell you it was successful? Well, I had to wait uh, a long time uh, to see it is successful. There were so many side effects. Uh, perhaps uh, the shimmerism uh, fell down. Uh, shimmerism is the chimerism. Uh, chimerism oh. is the percentage of the uh, new cells uh, to the old cells, mm. and my uh, chimerism uh, went down to seventy percent. So they had to push the immune system, and so I were I got, got a special chemo and this uh, after the chemo procedure i got a, a, a new t cells from my donor and that managed to get rid of my old cells oh. and wow. also this is a high risk uh, mm -hmm. procedure so lots of monitoring complications having yeah. to 
adapt and change things and try. It's a lot. But you did it. Yeah. What what got you through? What was your mentality getting through that? I looked forward because I wanted to live with Ingo and mm. that uh, guided me through this. I love that. Well, there were many other, <laughs> but I don't think we have to mention all of them. Yeah. Uh, perhaps something is uh, relevant to many leukemia patients that live a normal life after it. Uh, it's normal that 50% of these get a, a broken hip. And I also, my hip broke and I got, oh. had to get a new one. Mm, but I was lucky to have this procedure in the university hospitals, so they didn't, uh, they can, could choose the best option for me. And so mm -hmm. I got a ceramic on ceramic hip and ceramic, I, ceramic mm -hmm. and well, I will hope that this uh, hip tap will last a long time. Well, you have a great um, energy and, and optimism, gratitude, I think is the right word. Okay, so for 10 years, you kept your identity anonymous. Yeah, Can well, you uh, if you have leukemia, you have to give your life away for the whole procedure because you can't plan anything. And I read about Timothy and that he was big in the media and I said, hmm, you can't control it if uh, the story is out. Uh, mm. uh, you can't control what the media makes with it. And I was anxious about it. My doctors told me, well, think about it uh, more than twice if you want to share your story. And well, I was first asked to be part of the power of love. That's a great community coming together in the Netherlands for HIV positives and their relatives. Um, but they first asked me in 2000, but it was only um, some months ago that I stopped art and I didn't want to be- 2020? The... Yeah. That's uh, the year? And uh, I didn't want to be the patient known to be cured and one year later uh, to tell the people it didn't work. So I, I said, hmm, not this, this year, and luckily they asked me more than once, <laughs> but unluckily I couldn't uh, manage to meet Timothy in person mm. because he died. And that was for me the thing to, to step into his uh, feed and to tell my story. Mm. At, at that time, I were only I had given my first name and didn't sh uh, show my front face because I was afraid of the yellow press. But uh, now I can tell it didn't happen that they knocked on my door. So yeah. what's the I'm yellow fine. press? Uh, the newspapers uh, with oh. the is it not a common uh, word mm. in? Uh, I'm not familiar in, with it in the U.S. Uh, the yellow press. I think like uh, the paparazzi tab yeah. tabloid. Sensational, mm, okay, yeah. Uh, and Adam told me about his uh, experience, uh, and so I was uh, yeah. afraid that that could happen to me, but um, it went good. Great. And after the article was in Nature Medicine this February, I said, uh, well, I will show my face and support my doctors for their work. And also I would love to fight against HIV stigma. I would love to uh, encourage people to uh, have their blood tested for stem cells. There are different organizations all over the world who uh, collect these uh, samples. Mm -hmm so that more people that get uh, cancer can be cured. Yeah, fantastic. What's, well, you touched on it a little bit, but what's next in store for you, either personally or professionally? Well, I hope that I can do this work uh, a little bit more. At this time, it's 
it's uh, good because not everything is coming up at once. Uh, it's I did some uh, TV shows in Germany. I was invited as a guest of honor to the Amsterdam dinner, the biggest charity event mm -hmm. in the Netherlands. And I would love to do such things in the future and to show my face, uh, to have my sh face in the media and to encourage scientists yeah. and to tell people it's possible to have the HIV cure and I hope that the scientists put together the puzzle pieces from all the cases and to can recreate yeah. the, the therapy with gene technology. Mm -hmm. So I heard a lot of, of it today and I think the uh, scientists are, uh, they, I think they can see uh, light at the end of yeah. the tunnel, but we don't know how long the tunnel is. Yeah. But exactly. I think we can, we can think about having a cure. Yeah. And it's being approached from so many different angles, so many yeah. different strategies, all, all at the same time. Yeah, and if you can compare all the cases in the ICSTEM database, they are all different. Perhaps the Genevian patient, he doesn't have the gene defect, but he is treated with a special medicament to treat graft versus host. And the side of effect of this medicament is that uh, to get rid of the HIV reservoir. Mm -hmm. So that might be another um, puzzle yep. piece. Yep. And this work also informs research into any number of other illnesses and diseases too. So yep. it's, it's really what benefits the HIV community it benefits the whole world at the end of the day. Back into your personal life a little bit. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. What are some of your hobbies? <laughs> You told me about one yeah. very unique uh, <laughs> collection that you do have. Uh, I collect uh, CDs. Uh, I have a big collection. I think it's near 1,600. Um, and that's, that's not just the, the CD itself. It's the jewel case as well. Yeah. Because you, cause if you just have the CDs, it's, it takes up less space. But if you have the case too, that's, that's a commitment. Yeah. Why not? Why not records or just MP3s on a, on a phone? Well, when I grew up and CDs came out, uh, it was the holy grail for me uh, because you can have a sound without uh, scratching the needle. I hated this, <laughs> <laughs> and I hated to. Uh, turn around the vinyl uh, for the second side and I w it was great to have a remote control to skip through the uh, songs um, and I well uh, and if you uh, buy vinyl now it's much more expensive know, the uh, if you get uh, the one steps things I think they are about uh, 200 euros or dollar and uh, it's amazing so uh, if you get the CD of these things it's much cheaper <laughs> all right well thank you for sharing that <laughs> I put you on the spot um, before we wrap up is there anything else you'd like to share or discuss that we haven't touched on yet I would love to have the focus on my uh, stem cell donor, Anna. Mm. I think she's a great girl, uh, a great woman. <laughs> and uh, when she got my first letter, it was the first day of her chemo because of breast cancer. Wow. Uh, you can't imagine how big the whole story would be. Uh, Do you I think, think she would be open to, to chatting with me as well? Of course. Really? Okay. I would. I would love to to have her on. So uh, they can make a movie out of it. <laughs> <laughs> My doctors told me they want to uh, say who's playing them. Oh, he he wants to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to promote? I you sent me a great uh, list, a document of of articles and videos and all a bunch of different resources covering you or things related to you. 